welcome back to civil engineering tutor in this video i am going to discuss some very easy type of questions from get 2022 paper in many state psc junior engineer or assistant engineer exams questions are directly copied from get papers as you know that get is all india level exam that's why you must solve get previous years paper okay so in this video i will be solving some of very easy type of questions from get 2022 so let's start this video so here is the question number 1 the hoop is stressed at a point on the surface of a thin cylindrical pressure vessel is computed to be 30 mega pascal the value of maximum shear stress at this point is so here question is regarding hoop stress so those who have already studied hoop stress they must be knowing the formula for hoop stress so here value is given 30 mega pascal and the general formula for hoop stress is pd by 2t however in this case we do not need this formula so let me draw a th thin cylindrical vessel first so let's suppose this is a thin cylindrical vessel my drawing is not up to the mark so please pardon me for that so here let me take a cubical unit from this thin cylindrical surface so in this cubical unit three mutually perpendicular stresses are acting one is let's suppose sigma 1 another one is sigma 2 and another one is sigma 3 and all these stresses are major principal stresses minor principal stresses and intermediate principal stresses okay so in any case the maximum shear stress is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 where sigma 1 is major principal or maximum stress and sigma 3 is minor principal or minimum stress okay so here if this is a thin cylindrical vessel we know that hoop stress is generally acting in this circumferential direction okay so this hoop stress if we if we cut this cylindrical somewhere here and then this type of two sam two parts will be obtained and hoop stress is generally acting in this direction in circumferential direction okay and there is one another stress that is called longitudinal stress so that is acting in this direction and then there is a one radial stress okay that radial stress value sigma r is zero in this case okay so here three stresses is acting just remember this formula that for thin cylindrical vessel sigma 1 is the or maximum stress is called hoop stress or circumferential stress and the expression for this is pd by 2t where d is the diameter and t is the thickness and p is the internal pressure okay so sigma 2 that is the intermediate stress we call it we call it longitudinal stress also and the value for this is sigma 1 by 2 that means half of hoop stress okay and this is equal to pd by 40 and then there is one another sigma 3 that is also sigma r or sigma radial and the value of radial stress is zero so here minimum is this sigma r and maximum is sigma 1 so if we have to find the maximum shear stress tau so tau will be sigma hoop stress minus sigma radial stress by 2 so here radial stress is zero so sigma hoop stress by 2 will be the answer so here hoop stress value is given as 30 mega pascal so simply divided 30 by 2 we will get 15 mega pascal so that is the correct answer so in this case correct answer will be 15 mega pascal so i hope you got the concept so if you are facing any kind of problem or in understanding this concept you can comment down below this video and then i will make a detailed video on hoop stress so let's move to the next question in the context of elastic theory of reinforced concrete the modular ratio is defined as the ratio of four options are given young modulus of elasticity of reinforced material to the young modulus of elasticity of concrete so i i am not going to the options okay because here modular ratio is asked okay so modular ratio mean what modular ratio is important in case of working stress design or elastic theory whatever you could say and it is generally represented as m and it is the ratio of elast young's modulus of elasticity of steel by young's modulus of elasticity of concrete okay so the expression for this is generally 280 by 
सिग्मा सीबीसी वेयर सिग्मा सीबीसी इज परमिशिबल स्ट्रेस इन बेंडिंग कॉम्प्रेशन ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑब्वियसली क्वेश्चन टू करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ए द यंग मॉड्यूलस ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ रिइनफोर्समेंट मटेरियल दैट मीन स्टील बाय यंग मॉड्यूलस ऑफ इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ कंक्रीट सो हियर क्वेश्चन नंबर 2 करेक्ट आंसर इज ए सो दिस इज वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड बट ट्राई टू रिमेंबर दिस कांसेप्ट ओके बिकॉज़ दिस कांसेप्ट्स आर जनरली रिपीटेडली आस्क्ड इन योर जूनियर इंजीनियर एग्जाम्स लाइक एसएससी जेई और योर स्टेट पीएससी जेई और ए एग्जाम्स ओके सो लेट्स मूव टू आवर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 Let the sigma b and sigma h denote the effective vertical stress and effective horizontal stress, respectively. Which one of the following condition must be satisfied for a soil element to reach the failure state under Rankine's passive earth pressure condition? So, in Rankine's passive earth pressure condition, what we know that if this is your retaining wall and this is the soil that this retaining wall is retaining. so this is known as backfill obviously you know that so what happens in passive earth pressure condition that this retaining wall try to push the soil mass or backfill inside okay so here what generally happen is that this horizontal pressure has higher value as compared to this vertical pressure okay so in case of rankine's passive earth pressure always sigma h and this is sigma b so sigma h is greater than sigma b okay so here correct option will be a sigma b less than sigma h okay and for active pressure condition we know that this backfill push this uh, retaining wall so this retaining wall generally only fails in this direction so here what happens in active cases this sigma vertical has higher value than this sigma horizontal okay this is for active state and this is for passive state so just remember this very easy type of concept okay now moving towards next question that is question number 4 four different soils are classified as ch ml sp and sw okay so you have given with this four type of soil this is as per unified soil classification system which one of the following options correctly represents their arrangement in the decreasing order of hydraulic conductivity so now we have to find the what is the decreasing order of hydraulic permeability so here first thing you should know that permeability k that is proportional to what diameter square okay you have already seen those expression that k is equal to c d10 square like that okay so here permeability coefficient of permeability is proportional to the diameter square or you can say that if higher diam diameter is there or the larger size of particle in that case permeability will be higher so if we have a gravel size particle like this kind of particle here permeability will be relatively higher in comparison with if we have sand or clay okay because in case of sand or clay when particle size is very less as compared to like gravel or something then water generally find it difficult to pass through this highly packed particles okay so here the correct order will be like this that gravel has the highest permeability then you have sand then you have silt then you have clay right so here the questions is given here two types of sand is given sp and sw now we need to select which one has higher permeability or higher hydraulic conductivity so sp that mean what sand with poorly gradation okay poor gra poorly gra graded you can say or poorly gra graded and sw that is well graded so what is the difference between poorly graded and well graded that in case of poorly graded there will be like one type of particles only and in case of well graded there are larger particles as well as smaller particles also so which one will be more densely packed this one or this one which one will be having more void uh, inside this uh, mass we can say so the obvious answer would be in poor cases that which one is poorly graded in that cases there will be high chance of what voids but in case of well graded so if there like you have boulders or bigger size particles 
and in whenever there is a gap between the bigger size particles this gap is filled with smaller size particles but when in case of poorly graded you have like almost uniform graded type of soil so most of the particles are of same dim dimension so this inter intermediate gaps are generally not filled with any particles so there are always some gap remained in this poorly graded soil that's why sp is more permeable than sw so here we will say that the highest permeability will be for sp and then sw okay because sw has different size of particles that's why it is densely packed okay so if one part one soil mass is densely packed then the water will find it very difficult to travel through that okay but sp is not that much densely packed that's why here density uh, sorry hydraulic conductivity order will be sp will have higher hydraulic conductivity than sw okay and then we need to find whether ch or ml so obviously ml is sealed and ch is clay so then we will have ml and then we will have ch okay so here we will see which of the options suits this order so here not any option is suiting this order so here the correct the nearly correct order is a actually the options given here are slightly i think uh, wrong options are given here so correct answer will be a in this case but the correct order should be this way okay so they have not differentiated between sw and sp but as far as concept is concerned this is the correct order so you can select option a but the correct order will be this way sp will have higher order okay so i think options is wrong here and if you think that this is the correct order this should be the correct order please comment down below and if you think that the whatever answer key is given by gate is correct then also you can comment down below this video okay so that i can understand that what is the logic behind this okay according to me this question number four option a should not be the correct answer okay here all the options are wrong but if you find that any of, uh, of the option or like a is correct option then please explain why this a is correct uh, option okay so that i can also understand what is the concept here now let's move to the question number five with respect to fluid flow match the following in column with x with column y so here in column x we have viscosity gravity compressibility and pressure in column y we have those unitless number like mac number reynolds number euler number and fraud number okay so we need to match here so viscosity we know is related with reynolds number gravity is related with fraud number compressibility is related with compressibility is related with mac number and euler number that is related with pressure okay so here correct order will be a so in this problem total hardness is given as 500 milligram per liter of calcium carbonate so at first we need to find the equivalent weight of calcium carbonate so that is mass by valency so here mass is total 100 gram and the valency for calcium carbonate is 2 so simply this will be 50 gram per mole okay mole so if we need to convert this total hardness of 500 milligram per liter of calcium carbonate to milli equivalent per liter then we simply need to divide this milligram per liter by that equivalent weight okay so equivalent weight is here 50 so this will be 10 milli equivalent per liter okay gm per mole so the correct answer will be a now question number seven for wastewater coming from a wood pulping industry chemical oxygen demand and five day biological oxygen demand were determined for this wastewater which of the following statement is correct so you have cod and you have bod 5 so from definition what we know that cod is chemical oxygen demand here both biodegradable as well as non biodegradable items are there but in bod 5 we have only biodegradable substances okay so which one will be more obviously which has biodegradable plus non biodegradable so cod will be always more than bod 5 okay so here the options are cod greater than bod 5 obviously correct option second one is cod not equal to bod 5 
I am going through option by option because here the question is that which of the following statement is are correct. Okay, so the options, okay, multiple options may be correct here. That's why you have to check every options. So here the question option two will also be correct because if COD is greater than BOD five, that means these two values are not equal. Okay, so this is also correct. Now the next option is COD less than, so this will not be the correct anyway. So this will be cancelled out, and then COD. Is equal to BOD five, so this is also not correct. So here A and B is correct answer. Okay. So next question: An uncompacted heap of soil has a volume of ten thousand meter cube and void ratio of one. If the soil is compacted to a volume of seven five zero zero meter cube, then the corresponding void ratio of the compacted soil is. So here, volume of uncompacted soil B one is given as ten thousand meter cube. And the corresponding void ratio is given as one. Now, when the soil is compacted, the volume comes to seven five zero zero meter cube. So, what well, will be the E or void ratio? So, let's suppose this is the phase diagram of the soil. So, at the start, there is some portion of solid portion, and then we have water and air. So, after compaction, this air portion may get reduced. Okay. So, this may be the Final phase, okay, of compacted earth. So B S will always remain the same, and then your water and air portion may get reduced, okay. So anyway, so B S will always remain same. Now we know what that total volume B is equal to volume of solid plus volume of void, okay. Now E is equal to what? E is equal to volume of void by volume of solid, right? So this means that B B. Or volume of void can be written as E into B S. So now, if total volume B is B S plus B B, then we can write B S plus in place of B B we can write E B S. So this will be one plus E into B S. Okay. So total volume B is equal to one plus E into B S. Now B S is equal to B by one plus E. Okay. So in this problem, B S will always remain same. If you compact the soil or if you do not compact the soil, B S doesn't change. Okay, so B S remain cons constant. So we can write it like this: that B one by one plus E one is equal to B two by one plus E two is equal to B three by one plus E three whatsoever. So in this case, we have two volume is given and one density. A, a, One void ratio is given, so we need to find the another void ratio. So we can simply put this equation B1 by 1 plus E1 is equal to B2 by 1 plus E2. Now we need to put the value of B1 and B2 in this problem. So here 1 plus E2 will be equal to B2 by B1 into 1 plus E1. So here B2 is 7500 and B1 is 10000. And this one plus e one is one. Okay, so this this will be cancelled out. So here it will be point seven five into two. So that is equal to one point five. So e two will be equal to one point five minus one. That is equal to point five. Okay. So the correct answer for this case is the vo volume. Uh, sorry, the um, void ratio of compacted soil mass is point five. Okay. So that's the correct answer. Hope you got that. Hope you understand this problem. This is very easy problem. A concentrated vertical load of three thousand kilonewton is applied on a horizontal ground surface. Points P and Q are at a depth of one meter and two meter below the ground, respectively, along the line of application of the load. Considering the ground to be linearly elastic, isotropic, semi-infinite medium, the ratio of the increase in vertical stress at P to the increase in vertical stress at Q is so here. This is suppose a uh, soil mass and some load Q is acting here. Okay, now under the application of this load, okay, there are two points at one meter depth. Let's suppose this is one meter, and there are another depth of two meter. Okay, this is two meter depth. So there are two points. This one is P and this one is Q. Okay, two points are given P and Q. Now 
we need to find the ratio of increase in vertical stress due to this induced load okay so here r is zero that means there is no radial distance from the application of the load to the uh, to, from the line of application of the load to the point where we need to find this stress increment okay so r is zero here and from Bosnik's equation we know that sigma z is equal to 3 by 2 pi into q by z square okay so here this terms 3 by 2 pi into q these are constant here we need to find the ratio of sigma p by sigma q sigma q okay so this is the ratio we need to find now from here we got that sigma is proportional to 1 by z square so sigma p by sigma q is equal to z q by z p square where z is depth so here z q is 2 meter and this is 1 meter so square is equal to 4 so the correct answer is 4 here just remember this formula okay that sigma z is equal to 3 by 2 pi into q by z square moving towards our last questions of this session and if this video is helpful to you please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are coming first time and if you want more videos on get 2022 solutions or in any other topics you can comment down below this video so let's move to the question number 10 the bearing of a survey line is n 31 degree 17 minute west its azimuth observed from north is dash degree okay so this is very easy question again so we have bearing is given and we now we need to find the azimuth from north so let's draw this bearing first so n 31 degree 17 minutes so this is on this this quadrant okay so let's suppose this is the angle they have given so we need to find this total angle for what azimuth from north so we know that this total circle is 360 degree so simply subtracting this bearing from this that means 31 degree 17 minute we will get the answer i think you get the concept and you can easily calculate this okay just remember here that at the end you need to convert this into degree that how, how can you convert that in degree so let's suppose the answer is 31 degree 17 minute so you can convert it like that 31 degree 17 by 60 okay then you will get the value in degree okay so i hope you got the concept here and now you can easily calculate what will be the answer from uh, subtracting this value to from this value okay so that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching this video all the best for your preparation thank you